Good evening and welcome to night prayer with us at St Andrew's Horton of Skern in Darlington. We'll be using the Worship at Home booklet and you can print a copy from the web address that's showing. Our readings will be taken from Acts chapter 14, um, part of Psalm 118 and from John chapter 40. Our opening verse from Deuteronomy. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's just take a short time to reflect on the day that we've had and calm ourselves before spending our night prayer with the Lord. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 14, and uh, we're going to read verses 5 to 18. So Acts 14, starting at verse 5. There was a plot afoot among the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to ill-treat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe, and to the surrounding country, where they continued to preach the gospel. In Lystra there, was a, there, there sat a man who was lame, and he'd been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed and called out, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas, they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when, when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends! Why are you doing this? We too are only human, like you. We're bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he's not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty in keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, a misunderstanding. Uh, and you can understand why, really. The people of Lystra and Derbe had seen a miracle. A lame man walks, a man who'd never ever walked before because he was born with a disability that prevented him from doing so. The area around Lystra and, and Derbe appear not to have heard about Jesus yet. They were still worshipping ancient Greek gods, Zeus and Hermes. So, if you see a miracle, wouldn't you put it down to the workings of the gods that you knew about? 
perhaps that seems natural. What was really good was that Paul and Barnabas were able to tell the people about Jesus, about the sacrifice he'd made on the cross and about his defeat of death in his resurrection. About Jesus being God, the one true living God. It was through the living God that the earth was created and that they could grow their food. When you believed in false gods for a long time, it can be difficult to change. Today's false gods come in all sorts of guises. A nice car, the latest mobile phone, designer clothes. Anything that moves our focus from the one true living God can undermine our faith and our ability to pass the wonderful message of salvation on to others. So beware of false gods. The psalm that we're going to read sings out praises to the one true living God whose love for us endures forever and is not fleeting. Psalm 118 and it flits about a bit, verses 1 to 3 and then 14 and 15. If I remember, I'll tell you when I move on to verse 14. So starting 118 verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my defence. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. And we say together, glory to the Father, to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our third reading is taken from John chapter 14 and starting at verse 21, reading to 26. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus and the Father are one. The words that Jesus is saying come directly from God the Father. And when the physical presence of Jesus is gone, his spiritual presence will be with us, the Holy Spirit. The promise that Jesus gave the disciples is valid for us today. Jesus said, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Well, reminders come in loads of different ways. Reminders about God, reminders about the wonderful sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, about his resurrection. So reminders might come when we listen to night prayer, when we listen to the Sunday service, we're reminded. Those perhaps are the more obvious routes. The Holy Spirit can reach us in many, many more ways than I could possibly think of. In what we read, who we talk to, what someone has said to us, 
what we see on the television, what we hear on the radio, what we see in nature, how our heart feels and what our mind thinks. God can remind us in many, many ways. And God is not restricted in getting to know us. So let's not put things in the way of us getting to know him better. Amen. We come to our time of prayer. Let's pray. Living God, we're conscious that there is so much in our lives that is uncertain. So much we don't know or understand. But we do know that you are with us and that the Holy Spirit guides us. You remind us in so many ways that you are an unchanging rock and everlasting hope. May we always be open to hear you in whatever way, whatever way you reach out to us. Help us to see that what was true when Jesus was speaking to the disciples is true now. That resurrection is not just about life after death, but about constant new beginnings. The way you're able to transform every part of our lives, the way you bring renewal. May you open our hearts and minds to you and recognise, may we recognise your guidance in our lives. Amen. And the prayer for today. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious and holy God, we bring before you those who are ill and in any kind of need. We think of those people listed in our prayer, May prayer leaflet for John, Leslie, Douglas, Violet, Margaret, Heather, Diane and Karen. And we also bring before you the names of those that we know personally who are in our hearts and on our minds. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remember the family and the friends of those who've died recently, and in particular, the family and friends of Ken Chapman and Mary Hall. Gracious God, as we remember before you those who have died, surround all who mourn with your strong compassion. Be gentle with them in their grief. Protect them from despair and give them grace to persevere and face the future with hope. In Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And we regularly pray for people in our church community. And today we bring before you Jean Dale. And also the people who live in Jesmond Road and Jura Drive. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon all these people. As they go about their daily lives, may they encounter you. May they recognise you in both the small and the large areas of life. May they recognise you as Lord and Saviour. Amen. 
and please join in with me with the following prayers which you'll find in the um, Worship at Home booklet. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And may the risen Lord Jesus bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of creation. May our hearts and lives echo his love. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here at Night Prayer St Andrew's Church in Hauntmaskern and I hope you can join us again each night at 7pm. Good night. God bless. <laughs>